Hello and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I am your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today there is no guest. Um, it's just going to be me because it is December 26th right now, and you know, it's the holidays, and it's just like one of those things where couldn't really get anyone scheduled, and everything got booked out a couple weeks, and instead of just not releasing one, I figured I would do um, kind of a shorter one on an interesting topic, um, which is Ted Reed, who wrote Syncopation, and there's not a lot of info to constitute a whole episode, but perfect timing to do it here, um, and I got some info online from a uh, very reliable source that I found, and um, and then I figured maybe we'd talk about some other just drum history stuff that I could update you guys about, and um, some cool things happening in the future, and all that good stuff. So, this episode about Ted Reed was recommended by Mike Talbot um, a while back, I'm sure, and I posted on drumforum.org in July of 2021, and it's just a great place to go to see if there's anyone out there who, you know, knows information that you really just, I just couldn't find anything, um, and I'm, I dig pretty deep for all the drum videos and stuff, and I really just couldn't find anything, um, except actually someone else commented, and there's this, it, it kind of leads you to think that Ted Reed is this research fellow in the Carleton Research Unit of Innovation, Science and Environment uh, at Carleton University. I think that's what I thought too. And someone posted that as well. And um, it just doesn't, it, it it physically is not possible with the timing of it. Because when syncopation was written and uh, when Ted Reed was born, I mean, he would be like 150 years old uh, doing this. <laughs> My math is off there. But um, anyway, so that's not who he is. If you Google it, that kind of directs you to that. But that just isn't who he is. So anyway. JDA is the username of the gentleman who helped a lot and uh, provided all this information that I'm about to basically just read from him. And um, he asked that his username get used instead of a real name or anything. So he's JDA. So most people know what the book Syncopation is um, from when they're learning drums. It's a very, just one of those books that's like, you know, great for a beginner. And also you can find stuff in it to play at any stage of your drumming, you know, career. So the full name is Progressive Steps to Syncopation for the Modern Drummer by Ted Reed, um, published by Alfred, at least at this version that I'm looking at. Um, very famous book. And uh, again, it's just you see the guy on the cover um, who I believe is looks like he's playing a Gladstone snare drum with a really cool snare stand that's like uh, almost like it's for a statue. But um, so Ted Reed as a person, though, let's just here's information that JDA provided. Born September 6th, 1908 in Nescopec, Pennsylvania, served in the U.S. Air Force during World War II, was a renowned musician who played the drums, and as we probably could have guessed, was also a drum instructor, um, which probably was how he put together such a, uh, uh, I guess I would say an efficient and like straightforward book. Um, that's how I would look at it. Early in his career, he performed in Wilkes Bar with several orchestras conducted by Guy Hall, Ralph Paul, Eddie Gilligan, Ray Calabrese, and the Donlin Brothers. He also played in the 109th Field Artillery Band and the Alexander Band. In 1940, he moved to New York City where he performed with several orchestras conducted by Enoch Light, Vincent Lopez, Meyer Davis, Lester Lanin, Milt Hearth Trio, and Radio City Music Hall. He also played with numerous celebrities, including Bob Hope, Victor Borg, or Borge, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Buddy Hackett, Carol Channing, Gordon McCree, and Esther Williams. He also worked with NBC TV and WOR Radio in New York City, and with Muzak Records Corp. In 1948, he began teaching drums and rhythm classes at his studio and store in Manhattan, New York City, he wrote several drum instruction books from 1951 to 1970. His book Syncopation was voted number one by the World Drum Book Critics. In 1970, he moved to Clearwater, Florida, where he wrote three drum technique books. He was a member of Musicians Union Local 140, Wilkes Bar, and Local 802 New York City for more than 60 years. He was also a member of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Kingston. And he, like I said, was born in 1908, and he lived until December 20th, uh, 1996. So kind of anticlimactic because that's basically it. But um, 
that's more information than I've been able to find anywhere else about this, uh, you know, amazing drummer and um, really talented guy. So he also wrote a bunch of uh, articles, as far as I can tell. I think he wrote a little bit for Modern Drummer, probably kind of obviously in his later years. There are videos that JDA um, on drumforum.org suspects is uh, Ted Reed playing with Milt Hearth Trio, which I'm going to share those on the description of this so you can click and play them. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for Ted Reed. Um, I know for me, uh, I was taking lessons with Barry James, who was on the show before, who became a very good friend, who was George Lawrence Stone's um I think, I believe he's his last living student, um, and Barry's a great guy, but Barry, when I started taking lessons with him, he sent me a copy of Syncopation, he sent me a copy of Stick Control, and I love Stick Control, but I really, um, I don't know, I I felt Syncopation worked really well for me, and when I was growing up, I had a teacher who um, I thought was kind of original and had these kind of like, what looked like hand-drawn notes, and it was you know, really easy to read and it was awesome. And and then it turned out it kind of was just basically the, I think he was just copying pages from syncopation, um, which, you know, we've all done, we've all copied some pages here and there, but yeah, so that's Ted Reed. Um, if anyone has any more information, then let me know. But, um, you know, that's basically it. Um, and I guess on that note too, now I can just start talking about some random stuff that's drum history related. Um, so thank you again to Mike Talbot for suggesting that, which, Leads me to say that um, thank you so much to everyone this year as we're wrapping up 2021. Thanks to everyone who has suggested episodes. And I mean, it's a lot of people. Uh, I would say maybe every third day I get at least a suggestion or two, um, which is awesome. And I am trying to figure out now a better system of keeping track of everything because I do write down everyone's notes and I have a list on my phone in uh, notes, you know, on an iPhone and it works pretty well, but it really is easy to lose track of stuff or like someone will say something that's a great idea and it's like I read it and I mean, I'm I'm a human, so I read it and I'm like cooking dinner and then I'm like, oh man, that's an awesome idea and I like forget to write it down or something because again, it happens out of 130 episodes over three years. Um... So anyway, trying to figure out a better system just to make sure I don't miss anyone. And if I did ever miss anyone, then I'm sorry and I didn't do it on purpose um, and I've tried to correct it. I have gone back and retroactively recorded in people's names and just re-uploaded it, which you might not have even heard because it wouldn't show up unless you uh, kind of cleared your browsing history or whatever on your phone and then it would re-download um, just because I don't want to leave anyone out. So another thing I wanted to mention too is if anyone out there is like, I just think it's a good tip that if you're ever looking for a certain episode, sometimes people will say you should do an episode on like Ludwig. And I'm like, okay, that's be sure to go back and look at episode like six or seven or whatever. Because once you're on 130 episodes, it actually gets harder to find the older episodes. And in my case, a lot of the earlier episodes were like the really specific like Slingerland and, and the big brands. So... The tip that I would say is if you go to my website, drumhistorypodcast.com, under episodes, there's a search bar and I use it to be like, did I do that? Or, you know, let me find some more information or let me send this episode to someone. Uh, There's a search bar and you can search in, um, you can type in symbols or like, and, and then, and then Sabian, Peisty. Istanbul, Agop, like all these different episodes will come up because it'll pull the keyword. Um, so if you want Ludwig, tons of episodes will pop up because I think I use the keyword in a lot of it. So so anyway, that's just a little trick to just finding these old episodes that I that I think uh, is good to know because sometimes people use them for research and all that good stuff. And uh, another thing too is obviously uh, a lot of you know this, but this year I joined up with the Drum Click Podcast Network, which is Ben Hilzinger um, and... Chris from Big Fat Snare Drum put it together. It's been awesome so far. Ben is basically finding us advertising, which you you there's no way around it. You literally, to do something for so long that takes so much time, you have to be able to make money at it. Um, that's just the way the world works. And Ben has been doing a good job of placing ads. So whenever you hear an ad on the show, I mean, just know it literally, like that's what's keeping it going. Because like, the time that you're putting in the show is like time that you're not working or making money doing something else. Um, so, you know, the drum click 
uh, podcast network consists of Drum Candy podcast with Mike Dawson, um, Sarah Hagen backstage, uh, which is awesome. And she has a lot of great guests. Big Fat Five, uh, which is the podcast with Ben and the Big Fat Snare Drum side of things. And then the Working Drummer podcast, which has just a ton of awesome episodes. And everyone is super cool. We've been uh, fortunate enough to... I've met most everyone in person. I need to meet Sarah still. But besides that, everyone else has actually kind of um, hung out a little bit at the different drum shows. And um, it's just been really cool. And I hope that happens more in 2022. This year, I guess, what all would it be? I went to the Music City drum show, which was a lot of fun. And then I went to PASIC for one day, which I wish it was more. But um, uh, it was just awesome to see everyone. And I think we're all ready to get back to um, drum shows and just gives us something cool to do. Um, oh, and the, the uh, Chicago drum show, which was really cool um, as well. So... Yeah, and I hope to go to more next year. And I guess I'm trying to think of other stuff to tell you guys. So I went to that Rolling Stones show, um, thanks to Don McCauley, who, you know, is a great friend. And he was he was Charlie Watts Drum Tech, which Charlie is just, you know, greatly missed. Rest in peace to Charlie Watts. Um, I was fortunate enough to get to meet him um, in 2019. And it was different seeing the Stones. I've, I mean, that, that was, I've only seen him twice now. One with Charlie, one with um, Steve Jordan. It was different. Uh, but it was awesome. It was just like, uh, it was, I mean, he's an amazing drummer, but it was, it was kind of sad. I mean, for me, from meeting Charlie and just the, the connection with the show and that like once in a lifetime opportunity of like hanging out with him backstage and getting to go on the stage and like touch his drums. And then, uh, you know, that was like the last tour he was on before he passed away. So it was just different. Um, I had fun though. I mean, it was, let me just preface all that with it's always awesome i mean to get such a cool thing we were down my brother and i were down in the pit uh, i went with spencer who was on episode 100 here um detroit is really cool um the stones were just awesome it was great uh extremely tight i think steve jordan just was like there and made it happen and it was like he knew his role was to just play the songs um i think they did a good job of like introducing everyone, but it was definitely like the, instead of like the four of them going up with their arms around each other, it was like the three of them. It wasn't a thing where Steve Jordan's like, now I'm in here. Um, it was very tasteful. I'm sure tons of you guys listening have seen it as well. And I hope you liked it too. So lots of cool stuff coming up in the future. Um, some episodes getting booked. There's going to be a John Bonham, um, history that is happening very soon. I'm going to do a episode about get back, um, the Beatles, I don't I guess it's called considered a documentary, a movie um, that was just so cool. I watched it twice, which my wife thinks I'm crazy that I watched it that much. But I'm sure the Beatles fans listening understand it. Um, so I'm going to talk to Gary Astridge about that. Um, he got both those episodes actually got postponed a couple weeks. And that's sort of um, obviously I'm not saying it's those guys fault, but that sort of pushed me back a little bit. So now I'm doing this uh, solo episode just to get something out there. Um, but uh, I guess last and, and, and not least, I just want to thank the Patreon members who have joined and it's just been awesome. Been doing those bonus episodes and it's cool to have however many I always forget. It's like 30 or 40 people on there because um, it just you kind of forget and then you go, oh, wow, nice. An extra X amount of dollars. And then also I got to say thank you to uh, Dream Symbols. I mean, they're just unbelievably, they, they have literally, it's just a direct, I, they tell me what to, you know, Hey, maybe record something about a symbol bag. It's then, yeah, okay, go ahead and record a little bit. And then I do it and then I send them an invoice and they, they pay me. And it just is, um, like I said, it's a direct, it is literally what is making this possible after this long. And actually before I you know, forget, I want to mention too, that I'm, I'm working right now on expanding more into, uh, the world of YouTube because I've been on there for a while and, um, I just up upload these episodes just with a still image, which I realize I should probably be doing more videos and pictures and stuff. But again, it takes a lot of time. Um, so I hit the subscriber amount where you can actually get like monetization, um, on YouTube. So I guess just look out for more um, content on YouTube. I want to do, uh, I'm saying it out loud, so I probably need to do it, but I want to do like condensed five minute video versions of histories of like Ludwig and Slingerland. And I know that's a lot to fit in five minutes, but um, 
I could then direct to the longer episode, but, um, and, uh, also just maybe re upload some of the episodes with images that go along the way. Um, anyway, um, other stuff going on. Um, I, my wife is pregnant, just throwing that out there, having a baby boy, um, in May, I believe. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, Harry, my son is two and he's, he's a good boy. He's a two year old. There are definitely some, some moments he's, he's, you know, above all very good, good little guy, but, um, man, two year olds, it is, it is a thing that is, it is real. Um, but, um, yeah. And Abby, my wife, she's doing well. She's like I said, pregnant, which is, um, tough at times, but, uh, she's, she's doing great. Um, yeah, just, I'm, I'm up on the third floor of my uh, house, which doesn't have heater AC up here and no insulation, which insulation is going to be $6,000, uh, I think, because COVID. So I got to wait and, uh, you know, hopefully that comes down. But um, I got a new desk chair here at the Drum History, you know, uh, Central. And um, I guarantee people have probably heard some creaking of my old chair over the last three years. So that will be no more because it's uh, a real actual desk chair that isn't supposed to make noise. So anywho, uh, it's just good to talk to you guys a little more, you know, candidly, um, and not be so, uh, specific on an episode like, like, you know, things typically are, which I, which I like for the main episodes, but it's nice just to say, Hey, and talk to everyone like normal. So I hope everyone has a great holiday season and, um, 2022, let's hope that everything is getting better. Um, it seems like it, uh, I just hope it will. Let's, let's, we'll leave it at that. I think everything will get better and we can, uh, all hang out at some drum shows and some concerts, um, in the, the upcoming year. So again, if this is the first episode you're listening to, then this is a, probably a weird one to listen to, but, um, thank you very much for the people who have supported the show and who have listened from the beginning and who just send me these emails saying how much they enjoy it. Um, it's really cool and I just love it. And I've made some great friends, um, really, truly, uh, you know, both digital and in real life and a mix of digital and in real life, uh, you know, one transitions into the other. Um, so yeah, thank you again to JDA for providing all that great information on Ted Reed. Um, and like I said, that's kind of a, hopefully that wasn't a, you know, letdown cause there's not really much to it, <laughs> but, um, but that was basically it. Um, so, uh, if I find out more about him as a person and the biography, maybe I'll throw it in somewhere else, but you know, that's not much there to work with. So, um, yeah, on that note, I hope everyone has a great, uh, you know, start to 2022 and things will return to normal here in the next week or two, um, with the show. And, uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning.